A German World War I U-boat was found off Belgium's coast with the creepy remains of 23 crew still During World War I, German submarines, or U-boats, waged a highly destructive campaign against British shipping. One of the German aims was to prevent food imports and raw materials for the war effort from reaching Britain. In the course of the war, U-boats sank around 5,000 British vessels but lost 178 boats and some 5,000 submariners in the process. Now 100 years after it sank, one of those U-boats has been found off the Belgian coast. The submarine's terrifying potential as a weapon of war first became apparent in 1915 with the sinking of the Lusitania off the coast of Ireland. The liner had left New York for Liverpool, England with a total of 1,962 passengers and crew on board. German submarine U-20 sunk the ship with a single torpedo and 1,198 people died, mostly from hypothermia or drowning. As it became apparent that World War I was to be a long and attritional affair, both the Germans and the British hardened their attitudes. The British increased their stranglehold over German maritime commerce by tightening their blockade on German ports. In November 1914, the Royal Navy stated that any shipping in the North Sea was fair game. The British also said that they would regard any ship transporting food to Germany as a legitimate target. This infuriated the Germans who felt that the British were trying to starve Germany's civilian population. Because the German Navy was weaker than its British counterpart, the Germans saw the U-boat as their best way forward. The Germans made their own declaration in February 1915. They stated that any vessels in the seas around Britain were at risk of being destroyed. In response, the Royal Navy devised tactics designed to limit the damage that U-boat attacks would pose. Ships were told to either flee away from or to try to ram submarines. The Germans had been increasingly alarmed by the anger of the Americans who had lost 128 of their citizens in the Lusitania sinking. They were anxious not to provoke the neutral U.S. into joining the war on the British side. So the submarine war was largely abandoned in the North Sea and the Atlantic. However, operations continued in the Mediterranean and other seas. But as World War I rumbled on, the Germans again turned to the idea of an all-out submarine war. In fact, their efforts earlier in the war had done little to hamper British shipping. They sank only a tiny percentage of the merchant fleet. But now a German admiral thought he had an effective plan. Admiral Henning von Holzendorf believed that a telling blow could be struck against the British if the U-boats could sink 600,000 tons of merchant shipping each month. He based this notion on the work of Dr. Richard Fuss. He had claimed that destroying shipping in such numbers would bring the British to their knees within six months. Military commander Paul von Hindenburg told the German Kaiser, the war must be brought to an end by whatever means as soon as possible. Accordingly, the Kaiser authorized the resumption of unrestricted U-boat attacks, commencing February 1, 1917. At first, this new hostility on the high seas was a German triumph. In the opening months of the campaign, the 600,000-ton target was gotten close to or exceeded. In May 1917, the British introduced a convoy system in a bid to thwart the attacks. These convoys, which consisted of groups of merchantmen being escorted by Royal Navy ships, immediately reduced losses. The system also had the effects of increasing losses to the U-boats since they were more likely to come across well-armed Royal Navy vessels. By 1918, the final year of World War I, the U-boat hazard, while still very real, had been contained. Far more U-boats were being destroyed. Effective mine laying also contributed to the weakening of the German threat. The war came to an end in November of 1918 and all seaworthy U-boats were taken by the Allies for destruction. One particular U-boat, a UB-2 type submarine with the tag UB-29, was sunk in waters off Belgium in 1916. It was attacked by the Royal Navy ship HMS Landrail in December, but mystery has surrounded the whereabouts of the wreck of this U-boat and the fate of its crew for more than a century. One man, Belgian marine archaeologist Thomas Chermote, 
has spent years exploring seabeds for wrecks. In fact, Termote has made more than 5,000 dives in the North Sea alone, and in the summer of 2017, he dived in waters off the Belgian coast at a location near the city of Austin. The precise spot is being kept secret. The reason for that secrecy was that Termote had found the wreckage of UB-29, although he had to make more dives to find out its precise identity. I immediately realized this was a German U-boat, Termote wrote the New York Times. The submarine was remarkably intact and covered in seaweed, marine plants and orange, red and yellow flowers. Termote and the Belgian authorities were keeping the wreck's location secret so that it would not fall prey to looters. And there was another motive. The marine archaeologist had reason to believe that this U-boat was in fact a war grave. Termote told the New York Times, We are certain that the crew is dead and still inside, likely buried in the sand, though it's possible that some escaped. Archive records show that UB-29 set off on its last voyage on the 27th of November, 1916, with a crew of 22 on board. Termote has revealed that the boat is still in one piece, but there's clear evidence of damage to its bow. This suggests that it may have hit a mine. He hypothesizes that the ship may have been damaged in an attack, presumably by HMS Landrail, and it subsequently hit the mine on its way back to port. There were 93 German U-boats based in Belgian ports during World War I, and between them they sank more than 2,550 vessels. This was a horrifying but undeniably formidable strike rate. Of those 93 U-boats sailing from Belgian harbors, around 70 were destroyed. There was a high toll on German sailors as well, some 1,200 perished. The UB-2 submarines, 82 feet long and around 20 feet across at their widest point, could dive to a depth of some 160 feet. The submarines had two torpedo tubes on their bows and were equipped with an on-deck weapon to be used for surface defense and attack. The German government has now asked the Belgian authorities to declare the wreck of UB-29 a war grave. Speaking to the Associated Press, Rudinger Ludeking, the German ambassador to Belgium, said, The graves should be graves, that is to say, they should be protected and will rest in peace.